And then if it's over, oh. just you, it's there. Hi, everybody. It's Misty Buck. I am the president and founder of Miss Inc. I'm also an athlete mental health coach and an author of the book called The Athlete Mental Health Playbook. And I'm super excited today. It is Marketing Monday, and you know the drill. We bring in some of your favorite local businesses and entrepreneurs from around the South Florida area to talk about not just their business, but how they built it. So today I'm super excited because I have a dear friend here today, and this is my friend. Keith Saunders. He is a partner with E Advisors Pro. He's going to tell us all about that. Keith, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you, how you got to be here in Miami, because awesome. you didn't grow up here, right? For sure. Thank you. <laughs> Name is Keith Saunders. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm originally from New Jersey. That's where I grew up, went to high school. Um, there is where I got into sports, played football, basketball, ran track, played baseball. Uh, got a chance to stand out in football. Ended up going to a, a military prep school. From that prep school, I went to the University of Alabama. Um, had a chance to play with Nick Saban. A uh, great time in my life. Learned a lot of things, a lot of discipline. And then from there, I signed as a rookie free agent with the Miami Dolphins back in 2008. Wow. That's quite a journey. So that's how you ended up in Miami. You just stayed here yeah. after being with the Dolphins. I got a taste of the weather, the people, and <laughs> didn't want to go back. A <laughs> little different than Jersey and Alabama. Oh, yeah. Way different. Way different. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you here today. So... Um, I know you've been in the insurance world for quite some time now. Yeah. But why don't you tell us a little bit about eAdvisors Pro and what you're doing at the moment. And then I want to ask you some questions about how you built your business because it's pretty impressive. Okay. All right. So I've been now with eAdvisors Pro for five months and I've been able to partner there at the firm. Uh, we're a full service insurance agency. So we do employee benefits for companies. We do commercial insurance for companies. We do personal, so auto, homeowners life insurance and succession business planning for owners as well. Wow. So like, what are your top services right now that people are with the way the economy and everything is, is there something that people have with more of a concern over these days? So right now, um, our specialty is employee benefits okay. and, and commercial insurance of the business insurance uh, in South Florida, because of inflation, the rates are always going up, right? So owners, a lot of times get renewed. They don't know why they're being renewed. So we try to give that consultative service. Mm -hmm and really shop around and help them find the best, pro best best program for the best price. Right. And something that I love, so last time I saw you actually, so I think I mentioned that Keith and I are friends. So last time I saw you, you were actually just coming from a client meeting where you were like, you went to the site to like onboard the employees, right? Which I think Correct. is super cool. Yeah, because aside from being able to help the company save money, we want the employees to understand what benefits they have access to. So what we do is after we sign up the client, we have a full, a full meeting with the insurance carrier. We go through the benefits in detail, allow the employees to ask questions, and again, make sure they understand what they have access to benefit-wise. That's awesome because I think a lot of times at the bigger companies, especially, it's kind of like, here's your new plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with <laughs> Here no it education. is. Here's the paperwork. And no one's going to read 100 pages of paperwork, right? So exactly. And, and you'd be surprised if you go into a company they really don't know they have access to. And mm -hmm. that's, again, part of the goal is to help employees understand and educate them on not only their employee benefits, but to take it a step further, their, li their life insurance, their homeowners, their auto, give them an opportunity to price it around and find the best rate. Right. So with so many people starting their own businesses or going out on their own, so I know the employees, like, well, here, I guess this is the question. <laughs> What's like the minimum size that you look to work with? So right now our, our minimum size is 10 employees and we go up to 1500 so far. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's quite a big range. Yeah, and it's and that just goes to show like South Florida is all types of businesses here and from mom and pop shops to corporations and we want to be able to help everyone. Right, 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 right. That's super smart. I love it. So all right. So you got into you how long have you been in insurance now for a while? So yeah, so I finished playing football in two thousand nine and after that I, I kind of fell into insurance. So I've been doing it for thirteen years. Yeah. Which I think is awesome because knowing so many athletes myself who have made the transition out of sports it's really common for them to get for people to get really lost right former athletes after yeah. you retire because you're you're always focused on your sport so now when that's not there it's been like okay now what do i do so you yeah. say you fell into insurance yeah it was just coincidence uh someone i was dating at the time worked at like a small all-state agency uh -huh. that was transitioning into an independent firm so it was like okay we're trying to put together a team do you want to try it out and I tried it out and I was an agent for three months. I didn't make a dollar uh -huh. and I just kept pushing. And eventually I gained, gained some traction. It was like a snowball effect. Yeah. So I was able to learn the industry and really 
pretty much teach myself and just grow within within the industry. That's so awesome. So do you think I'm sure that that the discipline that you mentioned that you learned from Nick Saban, Nick Saban and Alabama and their whole team, did that translate into the discipline that you had to build this business? Because I got to imagine trying to sell insurance is not an easy sell. It's it's really not. So it just took a lot of, uh, I guess, endurance. Right. So yeah. you get a lot of no's in the process. I started off cold calling. I would make about 75 to 100 calls a day, a day, a day. Where a day. were you getting these numbers from, Keith? 75 to 100 we can't we can't disclose that oh. <laughs> no oh. but I, but i started i started calling on individuals it was all real estate agents uh -huh. so I, I realized like when i got into the business that real estate agents are independent contractors right and they need insurance so right. i was calling real estate agents initially then it transitioned from individual insurance to company to business insurance but yeah it just uh really, really what i learned in alabama was just again hard work pays off and and to try to endure as much as you can overcome adversity right Right. And that certainly has helped you build that business. I mean, 75 to 100 calls a day. It's a lot of no's. That's a, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but to your point that that helped you transition very quickly, right? It helped you go yeah. from, you know, starting to have maybe not any business at all. Cause you said it was real slow the first few months, right? You weren't yeah. really having any traction, but then you were starting to get some yeses. Yeah. And then I also, it, it's about your network. I came here with no network. I didn't know anyone. I'm not right. from, from Florida. Right. So that took time as well. Right. 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 But right. the cold calls help because you build friendships, you meet different types of people. Yeah. And it's, it's good. It's good. Oh my God. So cold calls have always scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> like, it's like, I've never wanted to try. So whenever people use this as a strategy and I know it can be very effective, I'm just always super curious about that process. So you said you would call 75 to hundred people. Did you have like a script? Did you have like, how did you prepare yourself to do that? So yes, I had a script and then I I'm realized. I'm going to ask you to share the script secret. <laughs> the secret sauce. We're not going to get that. You, you from know you, what? But... <laughs> the, the secret is to make the conversation as organic as possible. Well, that's what I learned. Like, if you sound like a robot, no one wants to talk to a robot. Right. But if you make it sound like a human interaction, people will have empathy. They'll understand. Like, oh, this guy's just trying to to, to sell his product or help me right. understand what he's trying to to pitch. Right. So, um, I I think that again, like cold calling, it helps you prepare for a lot of things. And the bet the most important thing is to make it as natural as possible. Yeah, that's a really good tip because it's like. Who loves, I mean, I don't know those those warranty, those car warranty calls that people get. It's mm. an automated thing. Do those work? Why do people keep doing this? Like, why do, <laughs> company, why do companies keep doing that? I don't understand. So I can totally see how the organic thing would work, and especially if you're approachable to what their needs are. Like, hey, you know, like I know you're, for example, the real estate agent, you're an independent contractor, maybe you're on the market for some insurance. You know, I'd love to chat with you about so you're that. Natural, you're natural. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Sign me up. Put me on your team. We need cold, we need cold, we need cold callers. <laughs> Put me on your team. So, um, okay. So that's awesome. So are, you were telling me a little bit off camera that this is something that you're continuing to use. This is cold call strategy, but now you're building a team to help you do that, right? Correct. So again, like you can't expand your network without trying. It can, it can come to you, but you're sitting and waiting instead of being proactive. So right. I have a team of, uh, of fronters who are also making calls. Um, and the goal again is to just spread the word and help build the brand of eAdvisor Pro. Mm -hmm. um, again, our, our whole goal is to help clients really look at their program, make sure they're in the best position and paying the right amount of money. Because mm -hmm. what happens more times than none is that they've had an agent for a long time. And sometimes you get you get lazy, you don't really shop it as aggressively. Right. And we're just trying to, again, help clients stay up to date, both for benefit price wise. And, and again, once they become our client, provide the service. Because mm -hmm. that's what keeps your clients is helping them on the back end, helping the employees being there, it really being a resource for them to use. Right, right. But I think so. I think that's really smart because, um, and maybe this is a concern that your clients have, but this whole notion of the great resignation and individuals are going to places that offer better benefits yeah. or they're wanting to give a shot just working on their own or whatever might be going on. Mm -hmm. So, are you seeing with that employers more engaged in the type of benefits that they're providing? they're having to be to keep those key employees because like you said like other companies are coming into florida now and they're offering aggressive packages yeah so in order to really be up to date these small our, our small 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 businesses here in florida need to be competitive as well to keep up and keep those employees in house yeah no i think it's it's amazing what's going on with that so like for example i heard recently that there's a comp a local company and one of the 
benefits. They're not like a mom and pop by any means, but one of the benefits that they offer to their employees is pet insurance. I was like, that's genius. You know how much money I spend on pet insurance every yeah. month? Like, that's so yeah. smart. Yeah. That's so smart. So what are some, are there anything that, not necessarily pet insurance, but are there other things that you're looking at to help make the benefits competitive for employers? Or maybe what you can share with our audience, things that they might not be thinking of that really won't cost them a lot, yeah. but could be a really good benefit. So like you're saying, things like pet insurance, there's identity theft protection that we sell as well and the voluntary benefits, right? So there's accident policies that yeah. are very inexpensive, uh, hospital policies, critical illness. These are offered through supplemental carriers like Allstate, Colonial, Aflac, Unum, and they're inexpensive. And what they do is they help supplement the higher deductibles that a lot, a lot of employees face. Mm -hmm. And what happens is if they're hospitalized and these policies kick in and pay the employee directly to again, help supplement that deductible. Oh, doesn't Nick David have a commercial about this Aflac he does full circle people <laughs> <laughs> we're going full circle now that way now that you're saying that i'm like wait i think i saw a commercial hmm. about that okay, okay. good job Affleck. Yeah. Great, <laughs> we're paying great, attention great job <laughs> so all right that's su that's super super cool so um what else can people do if they let's backtrack for a second and talk about business building and branding and marketing, right? So hmm. you mentioned cold calling. What else are you doing? Are you are you networking? What are some of your other go-to methods? So we have our team out there networking as well, going to networking events, um, the telemarketing as well, and then social media, right? So we're trying to build our social media presence as we speak. As yeah. we speak. Uh, we're he heavily engaged in Instagram right now, Twitter, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, and again, trying to build on those platforms. I gotta imagine LinkedIn would be a really good place for you all to be because of the amount of professionals and businesses that are already there on the platform. I mean, that's what it's for, right? Correct, correct. So how are you all using LinkedIn specifically? Do you know that, are you, I don't know if you're involved I'm in that not, part or I'm not, not too but. involved, but I'm trying to be more involved. But um, again, I know just a lot of active <laughs> posts on updates in the, in the market. Like for example, for homeowners right now, the market in South Florida is really tough and people are being stuck with, with high premiums. Started. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad, Don't but <laughs> we try to get our information on those types of things on, on yeah. LinkedIn to help people prepare and, and find the best options. Yeah, yeah. Or you could be like me and you're stuck with only one. Yeah, it happens. It happens, people, but there's nothing you can do about that. So that's <laughs> a little salty on that topic. But anyways. And those are some of the challenges we face as, a, as an insurance advisor, right? Like people look at you like, hey, why is my rate going up? And yeah. you have to be able to explain and help them see, okay, this is what's happening. How can we get around it and make the most of the situation? Right, okay. So you're not only doing the employee benefit package then, you guys are also doing homeowners insurance and different types of... Correct, as, as a firm as a whole, right? As we wanna, whole, we wanna right. be able to help our client in every area of insurance. So the business insurance consists of employee benefits and commercial insurance, uh -huh. but the personal can be your auto, your homeowners, your life insurance, all of those things, right? So we wanna be able to help not only the business owner, but also the employees as well. Wow. I yeah. love that. So I think I got to imagine that things change very quickly in your business. Is that true? I would think so. I don't know. I, you're the expert, obviously. Yeah, but I would I, imagine. Uh, I mean, with the carriers and rates, you yeah, know, but like overall concepts stay pretty much the same. We know for homeowners, if you're east of 95, you're going to have to carry flood insurance. It's going to be right. expensive. Um, we know that the rates are unfortunately always going up. But how can we help to keep them as low as possible? Right. That's, that's the thing that really is really challenging every year for me is just having a conversation with the owner and seeing the pain because the cost go up for the, for the owner as well. Yeah. And it's just, it's tough. A lot of businesses. It, yeah, it, it is tough. It is tough because it's not just to get into the property. It's how the expenses increase, how you're going to keep it too. Right. Yeah. Cause your escrows goes up, your property taxes go up, 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 up. So yeah. it's like, yeah. you know, you're constantly trying to plan for those things. So, um, that's, that's super, that's super interesting. So, um, and I know there's a lot that's trying to happen in legislation, although that seems kind of stalled right now, at least around the homeowners market. So hopefully we yeah. get some resolutions there soon. Cause yeah. And, and when we get the answers, we'll provide the updates. That's, right. like, uh, and that's, right. that's what a real broker should be doing for their clients, right. giving them the updates on everything going on. Right. So how often are you communicating these updates with your clients? So we, we have weekly mailers that go out to our email blast that go out to our clients on industry updates, mm -hmm. but we talk to our clients probably two or three times a quarter, just again, keep them updated, check in, make sure everything's running well. Oh, wow. I love that because I think you're right. A lot of insurance companies will get you signed up and then 
you know, here's what you need to do. And then you don't hear from it again. And then yeah. as, as a business owner, even the individual, you're like, I don't even want to think about this because this is always a headache. So you yeah. kind of just let it go. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, too. Like, you don't want to violate someone's trust. Like, I'm sure if you have insurance, it's, it becomes like it's on autopilot. But if you check in one day, you want to make sure, like, hey, I'm in the best position possible. Right. Like, yeah. what do you have going on in your life right now? Is there something else we need to be doing? Or maybe you can we can look at this plan instead. Yeah. There's been an update. That's super interesting. That's really interesting. All right. So do you are you guys going to I know you mentioned your team. Um, do you do networking? Obviously, you're here. So you're doing interviews, right? Mm -hmm. You're doing <laughs> stuff like that and doing yeah. media. Um, <clears throat> so what else? What else? You just mentioned social media. You mentioned telemarketing. You mentioned networking. What are some of your tips if somebody is just getting into a sales type of position? So whether they're a solopreneur, they're just starting out their business and they have to sell, right? Or yep. they're someone like a real estate agent. What, what would be some of your tips to help them? Uh, first, try to maximize your network. Mm -hmm. um, just again, like people are going to do business if they like you, right? So mm -hmm. you want to really maintain and take care of your relationships. I would start there and then don't be afraid to cold call and prospect. Like if you sit down and sit back and wait, you can only get so much in. Right. But if you're right. out there going after it, sky's the limit. So right. I'd say just be proactive in, in your business and, and your and your uh, hunting methods. And, yeah. And, and be proactive. And what if that's something that people are nervous about? Right. Because they kind of get scared about hearing no. Right. That, that happens. Yeah. So if you're nervous. Yeah. Like if someone just, on your team is like, oh, like, you know, I've heard so many no's, I'm feeling really discouraged or whatever, you know, like what, what, how do you build them up from there? Just, you've got to be able to tune out the no's, right? It's nothing personal. Just we're, we're calling people when they're not expecting the call. Mm -hmm. So you can't ever take it personal. That, that would be my advice. Never take it personal and, and don't be afraid of no's for every hundred no's. There's got to be one yes out there and it's going right. to, it's going to come. It's going to, you got to go after it and keep calling until you get it. Right. Right. And I love I love how you pointed out earlier that the yeses can kind of snowball and become another yes and another yes and yeah. another yes and another yes. And then I and then from there, I'm, I'm assuming you get referrals. Exactly. Exactly. Right. If you do a good job. And and again, like cold mm -hmm. calls build repetition and you start understanding more and more what you're calling about and you become more comfortable and, right. and ready to have the conversation. Right, right, right. I love that so much. So, gosh, I feel like we've talked about so much already. <laughs> <laughs> the fun stuff insurance right? yeah the fun stuff insurance so i don't know i'm not i can't see the screen i don't know if there's any questions coming in but if you have any questions for keith um yeah we, uh, let us know if you have any questions that are coming in we will check that out there and sorry the producer was just giving me a time check <laughs> so that's where we're at there so all right so um what else is up and coming for you Right now, just all focuses are on the insurance firm, right? So um, anyone who's listening now or sees this, this recording, just I challenge you to just start on your basic insurance, whether it's eAdvisor Pro, Allstate, Geico. Take the time to get your homeowner's rate checked, your auto quote checked, and make sure you're in the best position because we're in today's world, we're trying to save as much as money as possible. Um, that's a good way to start is internally with your policies. Mm -hmm. And what's something like if I'm a business owner and, you know, I'm looking to change policies or whatever it is, I'm looking at benefits. What's the first place to start? Is it, is it just just call me? Is that kind of the answer? <laughs> like, well, uh, I think you want to start internally, right? Like you want to look back at last year, see what the cost was, see what it was this year. So, you know, what your increase is coming into the upcoming mm -hmm. renewal. So you have a good starting point. If you know you got a 10 percent increase last year and you're getting another 15 percent you received a 25% increase over the past two years. So find out what you have. Then next thing is why. Why is my increase 10%? Why is it 15%? You should have an answer. And then what you wanna do is just two months prior to your renewal, you wanna go out to market to make sure again that you're in the best position mm -hmm. um, price-wise and benefit-wise. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's, that's where you guys come in. Yeah, that's where we come in. Um, also, benchmarking data. You want to see what other competitors or other companies in your industry are offering to people. Um, you should be able to receive that, that data. Mm -hmm. And then with us, once you provide us with a, a census mm -hmm. um, benefit invoice, benefit summary, we go to market. We put together side by side with one place and what we can offer through, other, through the other markets mm -hmm. as well. And we sit down and look at it together. Right. If you're in the best position, then you're you're in the best position, and that's the best thing for you. And we're, so you're not going to say change anyway. Like if they're going to, you're going to say if you're good where you're at, 
and I think that's that's very honorable. Yeah, and that's, that's the only way you can approach it because that pays off in the long run, being yeah. honest and transparent. So if someone's in the best position, at least you know you've done your due diligence and you know right. you're in the best position. And if not, you'll see the savings out there. Right. right, right, right. And that's the same for employee benefits, for commercial insurance, which consists of your workers' comp, your liability, your property insurance, errors and emissions. That's a lot, a lot more to that picture. And, and I always recommend getting that shopped as well. Same thing. Right. And are you seeing with, with what's happening in the digital world, are you seeing employers more and more wanting to get insurance on, um, on like, like cybersecurity and, and things along that nature? That's one of the biggest ones right now is cyber li liability. Cyber liability. Yeah, there, there is a lot going on there and it's really important to have your company protected. And a lot of businesses deal with personal information. So if that gets yeah. leaked, then yeah. Especially because we're all working remotely much more, much, right? So I think that that's, you know, if you're working from home on your network and this and that, and you're doing your best, yep. but stuff can happen. So maybe not everyone out there understands what that kind of liability protection is. And I think I'm kind of glad we touched on this subject because to your point, I think it's something that's just becoming more and more important. I read an article today in the Herald about how there's this new scam that you're going to get people are emailing you that you ran a red light mm -hmm. and sending you a ticket, even if you didn't really run that red light, but that's the scam, right? So you wow. click on the link. It's like, it's a, and it, and the hackers are getting much more sophisticated from yep. things that I have been reading. It's, it's kind of crazy. So talk to us a little bit about that, because I don't know that necessarily every business owner or solopreneur understands what that type of insurance coverage is. Yeah. So cyber liability really protects the, data you have on file mm -hmm. and what happens with that data right so like if a hacker gets into your file and gets access to a bunch of clients information you can be sued for that you become liable for it right so the cyber is put in place to protect you from that happening and that's why it's important again for every business that has some type of personal information on file to have that coverage because you do not want to be burned and and again with what's going on in today's world the hackers are very very active right now and what yeah. scared me back to your point is um qcr codes Hackers now are putting like their own little, little um like sticker over codes like in restaurants and uh -uh. gas stations. So when you when you do the the code, you're giving them all the information. So as soon as you scan the code, you think you're scanning like a menu. Yeah. At Earl's or something, and I'm not saying it happens at Earl's. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> don't put that in my mouth. I'm just saying, like for an example, you're out at brunch and you go to scan the menu, and you could be getting hacked because. Okay. Yeah, so wow, this, I hadn't heard of that one. That's nuts. Yeah, I heard that last week. My friend, he's uh, he's a U.S. Marshal. He shared an article with me, and I was like, wow. So wait, how do you even know if that's a real QR code or not? I don't Is know. there any way to know that? That's yeah. super. It's scary. Super crazy. So this, yeah, viewers, be careful out there and with your with uh, technology. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I I've been hearing this this technology that's developing where it's not even like a link anymore. It's when you go to um, sign into something and let's say like you sign in using your Facebook or your Google account, you don't have a separate username and password. Mm -hmm. But usually like a window pops up for you to sign into Facebook or Google or whatever it is and then you can get into the other account. Well, the hackers are, I forget what it's called. I had shared it on my LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. But what they're doing is they're duplicating what that looks like to grab your information yeah. from there. And there's things that you can look for to see like is this, a real thing should i put my information in or not wow. but it's getting really sophisticated scary yeah 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 someone needs to be doing trainings on how to educate people to just prepare. on that yeah. i know and, and it's constantly evolving because yep. people are i mean it's it's nuts out there what's happening with that so i would say if you don't have that kind of insurance coverage very important for the business yeah very. you should definitely go, go out and get it without hesitation yep yeah, because you don't want that to be the thing that brings your business down at all. It's a lot of li a lot of liability there. Yeah, a lot, a lot of liability. It's scary. Yeah, but the good news is, is you have insurance to help <laughs> protect do. those liabilities. We do, right? Yes, so. we do. All right. So, what else are you seeing out there that maybe a business owner watching this can be aware, of? like along those lines? So, hmm. um, <clears throat> again. Maybe. One of the biggest costs is your insurance. So do your due diligence, and that. Aside from that, I think that it's, it's all Florida. Else is pretty standard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Well, there, there's that. Um, and then um, now you mentioned you touched on earlier with different types of personal stuff. 
uh, you talked about life insurance and all that kind of stuff. So eAdvisor Pros does all of that as well. We do. We do. We also, we're starting a program next year or for the end of this year, we're going to have a, a wealth management um, like seminar for all of our clients, for all the employees. It's voluntary, but to help them get wealth education on how to properly manage your money with life insurance and how you should properly set up your, your portfolio for, for long-term success. That's super smart because I think a lot of people, admittedly myself included, I'm trying to be better about this, but you sort of fly by the seat of your pants yeah. <laughs> when yeah. it comes to we your, all, we all do. <laughs> right? Like you think, Oh, I'm doing this right. And I'm doing that right. Or I'm going to buy, um, I don't know, cryptocurrency or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. But yeah. there, there's, there's other ways to your point to manage that, right? And to figure out how to hopefully hopefully retire one day. Yeah, and there's so many layers to it too. Like one one of the basic things I see on a daily basis is like people say they have life insurance, but they have term. So with term insurance, there's no cash value. So like for example, most people have a 20 year term. If you or I have a 20 year term, that's going to be over in 60, uh, 60, 60 something years old, and we would have paid X amount of money into the policy. But if you outlive the term. There's no cash value and there's no benefit left. So you've paid X amount of money for 20 years for nothing, for nothing essentially. Wow. So something as basic as that people like we just don't know about, so we can't really understand it. But part of that education helps you understand, okay, what's best for me in my situation. Right, right. So there's life insurance plans, in other words, that will, you can have a cash value too. Correct. And then, again, that goes back to just what the person trying to achieve mm -hmm. with, with, their, with their life insurance. And that's just one example. Right, 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 right. Wow, there's so much to think about with all of this. So, Keith, if someone um, wants to reach out to you about maybe their business or individual policy or whatever it might be, how can they reach you all? All right, so you can reach me by email at Keith, K E I T H, at eadvisorpro.com or I guess by phone. <laughs> you can, if you want. I mean, yeah, if you want. I mean, it's 609 556 8587 if you have any questions. I can. Help as best as possible. Cool. All right. So that's how you all can reach Keith. So um, we just have a few minutes left here. So what are some things that you would tell somebody if they're getting into, like, let's say they're experiencing what you experienced coming out of football and they're getting into a brand new career. They don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. What would be some of your advice to somebody who's maybe making a career change or just getting started in a new field in terms of building up their, their uh, work? <laughs> Uh, make sure it's something you're passionate about, because if you're not passionate about it, it's going to be hard to wake up every morning and, and go do it. Right. So one, something you love, something you enjoy, something you're passionate about. Um, two, if you're going to do something, give it your all. If you don't put your all into it, you never know what the most you can get out of it. Yeah. And um, three is just um, try to use your network as best as possible um, and to help you. Right. And to help your network as well with whatever mm -hmm. you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really smart. So I think a lot of people forget about the relationships that they have already created and they dismiss that because you're thinking new, new, new business, but you're not thinking about going back to the people that you already have a relationship with. And, exactly. And they'll hear whatever you have to say. And it's good practice in the process. Right. Right. That's just a really, really smart tip. All right. So anything else that you want to we didn't go over today that. No, I guess just um, thank you for having me on. It's been a great time. And um, I guess I should give everyone my, my LinkedIn as well. And yeah. Yeah. So LinkedIn is Keith Saunders at eAdvisor Pro. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, Instagram is, is K S A U N 94. And those are the best ways to reach me. So look them up, connect with Keith, ask him your questions for your business or personal around your wealth management and life insurance and all that kind of stuff. Right. Even if you just got to change your auto insurance. We can definitely help. You guys can help with that too. I love it. One stop shopping. Yes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for being here for another Marketing Monday. Keith, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing all that wisdom. I didn't know a lot of this. The QR code thing blows my mind. So that's scary. Be careful. Holy <laughs> smokes. That's super scary. All right, y'all. We'll have a rest, a good rest of your week. And we're going to see you next week. We have another awesome guest coming on. He's been on the show before, but he's super knowledgeable about networking and speaking. So I'm super, I'm really excited to have him on next week. And, and with that, I I hope you all have a wonderful, beautiful week. And Keith, thank you again. <laughs> We'd love to have you on again anytime. Thanks. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Make it a great week.